Welcome to Thrive in Design, a podcast about making money and beautiful interiors as it relates to product-based businesses in the interior design industry. Each week, we'll discuss innovative strategies on how to approach product development and design sales in a shifting market. I'm your host, Nicole lachey Ben. Welcome back to another episode of the Thrive in Design podcast. This is a solo episode for me today. We're going to talk about three things that I think that every interior product company should be considering as they are trying to connect with designers, refine their sales experience, and steal specs from their competitors, all while incorporating different digital sales strategies and different technologies, right? This is for you, right? If you're listening to this episode and you're like, okay, what does that exactly mean? And how do I know if this is for me? Well, this is for you if you work for or own a company that manufactures or distributes interior design products. So that's anything that can be specified by an interior designer or an architect for their built environment. And maybe you're one, uh, a member of one of the following teams right? So maybe you're on product development, you're on the marketing team, you're on the sales team, customer service, quoting, or maybe you're a leader within your company. And recently you might have been thinking the following sentiments. You may have been thinking, I'm frustrated with bigger brands dominating a spec when I know I have products that are just as good, if not better. I'm confused about how we can create a tactile experience that allows designers to fall in love with our products and brand. Or you might have been thinking, I'm worried about this new norm and that it'll cause my company to lose meaningful connections and we may not be top of mind in the design process anymore. Or maybe you're just concerned that you'll start have to making pay cuts because it's been super hard for you to bounce back or meet your sales goals okay so if you're listening to this right now and you've had any of those sentiments I want you to know that you are in the right place and I I got your back okay so we know that over the last year and a half almost two years really two years probably now that we have seen dire economic impact and increased time at home right and this has impacted the world And it has also impacted the interior design and architecture industry as well. And I've seen that for some businesses, parts of what we have experienced has been a blessing for them because they were ready to capitalize on the shifting demands. But I've also seen many interior design product companies panic because they weren't necessarily equipped to successfully pivot. And I know this because for a long time, right? At a, for however long, probably longer than my lifetime, interior design product companies or building materials companies have relied solely on in-person interactions between sales teams and design firm design firms for years, right? They're like, keep doing what you're doing. Go out and do 25 plus sales calls per week. I've had um, leaders also say, just keep throwing stuff at the wall until something sticks, right? And that has been what they have relied on to get success, and that has been great. And if you can relate to that, I want you to let me know. Today, I just want to introduce you to a few things, but first, I want you to imagine if you no longer felt panicked about how to go to market without in-person interactions. You felt confident that designers were still specking your products, which leads to more sales, and your team was really on the same page about forward moving and achieving goals. How would that really make you feel? But most importantly today, I want you to think about how you can start being ahead of the curve and really know how to capitalize on shifting demands at any time. So even if this new norm is the regular norm, like it's never going back to the norm that we once knew, or if demands shift at any time, you can be able to start thinking innovatively. You can start thinking about digital strategies and thinking outside of the box when it comes to putting positioning your products and connecting with designers that are specking your products as well as the customers who are purchasing. 
So with my company, Thrive in Design, I focus on helping interior product companies increase their brand awareness and revenue. So I work with them to implement modern sales strategies that get them noticed by more interior designers, get their products used in more products, and systematically steal business from their competitors. And I do this by really refocusing my clients to start thinking like designers. And design thinking is a whole concept that I could probably go on and on and on about for days, but I'm just gonna give you this one quote from Tim Brown, who was like the father of design thinking and is one of the founders of IDEO, one of the biggest design and innovation consultancies in the world. And Tim Brown says, design can help to improve our lives in the present. Design thinking can help us chart a path into the future. So as you are servicing designers, why not start thinking like them? Start thinking innovatively. Start thinking about iteration. Start thinking about refining concepts, prototyping, and strategically to put your your products to the market. Because when a designer, specifically an interior designer, is thinking about their client, they're asking who, how, what questions, right? They're saying, like, who is using the space? How will the space be used? What will be needed to make a pleasurable experience? So you, as a leader at your interior product company, also should start thinking like a designer, right? So you might be asking who, how, what questions in terms of who is specking the product, how will they spec it, and what will be needed to make for a pleasurable experience to keep them coming back. And as you're thinking like a designer, I want you to start to think about the proprietary method that I use at Thrive and Design called ACE the Journey, right? So when you think of ACE the Journey, the first part is ACE, right? The word ACE, when you think of that word, you think maybe ACE the test. I know when I was in school, I wanted to get the best grade on a test, which is the A, or I wanted to get an A in a class, right? So when you're thinking about being the best or getting the best grade, you want to ace something. And then furthermore, when you think about the journey, I want you to start thinking about a customer journey or a designer's journey with your brand. A customer journey map is one of the tools within design thinking that you can start to really understand how a customer interacts with your brand, right? So that's mapping out their experience from start to finish. In the case of a designer's experience with your brand, that could be this from the time that they learn about your brand or products until the time that they specify your products until the time that it's actually um, the construction documents are finished, the spec book is out, products are ordered, sent out and it's all on the project, right? So there's a full journey from beginning to end, which is typically uh, cyclical if that journey goes well, right? So as you're thinking about ace the journey, right? You wanna be the best and you want to make sure that you ace that journey in terms of the designer's experience with your brand, right? So ACE is actually an acronym that I created and it allows you to start thinking about three questions. And this episode is all about three things that I hope for interior product companies to start thinking about. And those three questions for ACE are, one, how are your products appearing in the market? The second question is, how is your team consulting designers? And the third question is, how is your company executing a sale? Right, so I hope you caught that. The ACE was appearing, consulting, and executing. Right, so I'm gonna do a high level, just quick discussion about this because I have a whole training where I go into depth about each and every one of those things and why you need to start thinking about it. But just as a brief overview on today's podcast, let's dive into those questions. So the first one, again, of Ace the Journey was how are your products appearing in the market? A lot of companies have this down, right? When I say appearing in the market, that means like how is somebody coming in contact with your brand and what are they finding? right? That could be anything from them doing a Google search, from them finding you in their design library, from them finding your uh, company on Pinterest or Instagram, from them attending a trade show, 
different things like that. When you appear to those designers, what exactly are they finding in terms of information, products, um, the solution to what they are looking for for their design? How do you fit in their design intent? How do the people in your company present themselves, right? So it's all about how you're appearing in the market and really honing in on that first impression that you have with designers. Because I know for me, first impression is everything, right? It can make or break a relationship that you have, whether it be interior product company to designer or just out in the world in general, right? So this is your chance to really make a great first impression to capture the attention of a designer to really get them hooked and get them interested in using your products from there, right? I know the other day I was meeting with a brand who had previously sold their products exclusively through a distributor and they were switching their business model to sell direct, right? So they had been thinking about, you know, how they were appearing in the market and how they were appearing to designers. But really, when they were selling through distributors, a lot of that appearing really fell into the distributor's hands, right? In terms of what information that distributor was putting out, what effort they were putting out, what marketing materials they were putting out. So as they made that shift, they had to start thinking about all of the things and all of the touch points that a designer might have with their brand when they first learn about them, okay? So that's one question I want you to start thinking about. The next part of that ACE the journey was how is your team consulting designers, right? We live in a world, and especially in this industry where, you know, things are coming at us from all different sides. Where we have so many different social media platforms, everything is overstimulating. Um, There are hundreds, if not thousands, of interior product companies that are competing for the attention of a designer so they can get their products back. And I I have been in this industry for more than half my life, but in sales and interior product companies for about 10 years. And I've seen a lot of different presentation styles. I've seen companies really hone in on like, okay, we need to do 25 plus sales calls a week. Make sure you have that logged into Salesforce. Make sure you're updating these libraries. Make sure you update those, update your Salesforce for what you you put in the libraries. Like, right, it's really heavy on the numbers of sales calls, the amount of marketing materials that you put into the design firm, and not so heavy on, okay, how is my team actually consulting designers? And this is important because if you're not actually becoming a part of the design process, those designers might not necessarily be thinking about your products that you put in their library or that you presented at a trade show. They'll just be moving with the flow of their day and moving with the flow of the projects that they're working on. So when you're thinking about how your team is consulting designers, is really making sure that your team has an understanding of the design process, that your team can even read uh, a floor plan, an elevation, look at a rendering and understand the design concept, understand the design intent, and then also have a great understanding of your product line so that you're, so that they can propose something that a designer might not even be thinking of, right? So that's taking a consultative approach and becoming a part of the process and really being a resource to the, to the design team as they're working on a project. Right, that's where it really has worked for me and I've seen work for a few of the other sales reps that I've trained in the past. So think about that. So when you look at your sales team, look at what their background is. What are they struggling the most with? Is, are the strategies or tasks or sales calls or marketing placements, have those been successful? Have they led to projects? And if they haven't, how can you switch that? And they haven't led to the project that you hope for or getting more of the spec that you hope for, it's time to evaluate that and think about how your team can start consulting designers. All right, so I hope that's helpful. And the last thing that I wanna touch on today is the E in ACE the Journey. And that is how your company is executing a sale, right? 
everything that I'm saying right now is important in the, the designer's experience with your brand in that customer journey. You can appear to them in the market. You have the best branding and best products and win them over. You can get them to specify your products using a consultative approach. But when it comes to executing the sale, all that hard work in those first parts of their journey could be go to, gone to waste, could be put to waste if your company is not set up to thrive when it comes to executing a sale. And I say this because I've worked for companies that generate about $15 million a year in revenue. I've worked for companies that generate up to $100 million in revenue. On both ends of the spectrum, I have lost sales because we, we at some points we didn't have the proper strategies or teams or systems in place to like flip a spec or process an order quickly or get the products to a site fast enough, right? So when it comes to executing your sale, make sure you have a good understanding of like, okay, what does my sales team need in order to get this out the door quickly? What type of interaction does a purchaser need to make sure that we're top of mind when they're ready to flip a spec? And if they did want to flip a spec, what do we need to do that, right? So I know for me, I worked at a wall covering company for about four years, right? And a lot of the times my clients would come to me saying like, hey, Nicole, we spec'd XYZ uh, wall covering, but the company that we spec'd it from does not have it available. They're not able to make you know, a thousand yards of it for our project and we need it in four weeks. I was able to go internally to say, okay, well, we have something similar or we have a custom department that can make something similar and flush out both options in terms of all the details, including budget, lead time, pricing, how doable it was to pull it off for them, right? So it was because I had those systems in place to support me in the sale that I was able to win business over and ultimately steal those those sales from my competitors, right? But sometimes companies just don't have that set up. I've seen it on both ends. As you're in 2022, right? Or going into the following year and thinking about your goals and really supporting your sales team as well as supporting the designer in their design process, I want you to make sure you're thinking about these top three questions and these top three things in terms of appearing, consulting, and executing. That first question that we talked about today was how are your products appearing in the market? The second thing we talked about is how is your company or your sales team consulting designers? And the third thing is how is your company executing a sale? And with all of that, you're able to really ace the journey, okay? And I could talk about these topics literally for hours and hours and hours and dive into my consulting services to really help you with this. But today I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a teaser to really understand the process that we start with at Thrive and Design and really set a foundation for how we can hopefully work together in the future. So hopefully that sparked some good ideas for you and some healthy conversations with your teams, no matter what team you are on at your interior product company. And I hope to chat with you more about this soon. All right. Thanks for joining us this week on Thrive in Design. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Thrive in Design. And for more strategies on how your product company can innovate in the interior design industry, head to training.thriveindesign.co. As always, subscribe to the show to catch every new episode and leave us a review so we can continue to create captivating content. See you next week.